to welcome everybody today to our beautiful Sunday service here on the fourth Sunday of Easter here at Enslow Park Presbyterian Church in Huntington, West Virginia. We're so glad you were able to join us today. We have a few announcements. Um, today is Communion Sunday, so have your uh, bread and cracker or uh, juice or maybe a bit of wine ready for the uh, communion service, which will be later. Uh, great news about the Kingdom Kids EPP channel. Um, the women of the church are reading uh, books for the kids. Uh, Michelle is doing a great job with sound effects, and so um, getting a lot of interest in that. So thank you to the ladies, and thank you to Michelle. Also, we want to remind everybody about the ZBS, the Zoom Bible School, 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. Uh, we had 16 uh, people show up, and that doesn't include the dogs and the cats and the kids. So we had uh, a great, uh, great Bible study. Uh, there's opportunities for you to come in on uh, the telephone through a conference call. Contact Barbara about that, and more books are available now. Finally, uh, about the reopening, I know everybody's anxious to get back together. Um, there is concern because we have a, many of us are seasoned, and uh, so we want to take it slow. Um, the task force will be meeting uh, virtually on Tuesday to discuss those issues. And finally, there's really nothing more important than for us to be together here and give our praise and worship to God. So I say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you, and also with you. Please join me as we enter into our worship, the call to worship. Thus says the Lord, as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock, when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pastor them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, in all the settlements of the land. There they will lie down in good grazing land. There they will feed in rich pasture. I myself will tend the sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring them back as the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Amen. So now let's enter into a time of contemplation and perhaps sing along um, as we listen to our hymn of hope, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need.
let's hear our prayer of illumination. Let us pray. God, it's hard for us to get our heads around the fact that you are all in all. Without you, we are really nothing. We thank you for our breath, for our life, for our very existence. We thank you for the creation. We thank you for your spirit among us today as we enter into this time of hearing your word. And so I ask that you open our hearts and minds, Lord, to hear what you would have us hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our first reading today is from Psalm chapter 23, the well-loved Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second passage today is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Let's listen for a word from God. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the living word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon is entitled, Through the Gate. <clears throat> and today we read and heard a lot about the well-loved Psalm 23. But today I want to focus our attention on the passage from John 10, verses 1 through 10. Some scriptures, like Psalm 23, are complete unto itself and leads that will be said about it. In fact, by adding winded explanations, it may diminish the soothing impact it has on our minds and our souls and emotions during this, this COVID-19 crisis. So I encourage you to meditate on Psalm 23 during your quiet time, and I imagine many of you, many of you already have it memorized. But in today's reading from chapter, John, from chapter 10 from John, we have many images referring to shepherding and the gate, and gatekeeping. But here Jesus not only focuses on the idea that he is the shepherd, he says he's also the gate. Seems a strange way to describe himself. I did some research, and there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of names used for Jesus in the Bible, including Good Shepherd, Lion of the Tribe of Judah, 
the rock, and the true light. In fact, the source I looked at listed 400 names. 400 names referring to Jesus both in the Old and the New Testament, but gate was not included. And yet, this is one of the most important ways to think about Jesus, especially since he makes it clear by saying more than once in this passage that he is the gate. And yet, maybe you have, but I have yet to see an artist's rendition of Jesus as the gate. Since I worked for the Corps of Engineers for 24 years, I'm familiar with the importance of gates in our river navigation system. Our locks have miter gates weighing 400 tons, and the miter gates swing open against very strong velocity of the Ohio River and other rivers to allow the tow to enter into the gate chamber. Because they're so frequently used, miter gates require constant maintenance and are normally the first component to be replaced. Also in the military context, the gate is often the most vulnerable point. We've all seen movies where at the castle gates, you know, the men are storming the gates and they're trying to get through that gate and they're using uh, timber and logs to bust through the gate. And so, and so once they're inside that gate, the people are defenseless. So is Jesus saying he's the weakest link? No. He's saying he's the one who fills the gap when we are most vulnerable. In the context of shepherding during the first century, shepherds would allow the sheep to graze in the hinterland during the day, and they had to keep them moving because sheep eat not only the grass, but the root. So they tear up the landscape. So it was important for them to move, keep moving, keep moving. And so they would often be far away from home, and so they would build a sheepfold with just the rocks that were found, and the shepherds would place themselves in the opening, in the gap, to defend the sheep against thieves and predators, and also to make sure that the, that the half-blind sheep would not wander off. Thus they became the gate. So it was clear to those that were listening to Jesus during this, during this time understood what he meant. But Jesus' care goes beyond defending the sheep at night. He also says, we, the sheep, will come and go and find good pasture. The word pasture can also relate to eating. Pasture is a term about nourishment. And I believe Jesus is foreshadowing the spiritual food that he will provide through the Lord's Supper, the supper we will celebrate today. By laying down his life for us in the gap between heaven and hell, he saves us by the whole, and, and by the Holy Spirit sustains us with the regenerating power of spiritual nourishment through this spiritual food. Yes, Jesus is the gate that enables us to be saved, but there are other important aspects of this description. In verse 9 of chapter 2, 10, in John, Jesus says, whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find good pasture. Here Jesus recognizes the free will of all humanity. We might even say, whoever chooses to enter through the gate will be saved by Jesus. And the latter part of this phrase really is even more significant. The words enter through me gives us a sense of movement as going through something to get to the other side. And the word through is a common preposition and it has so many, so many different meanings. It's kind of like the verb is. <laughs> I will always remember when, when President Bill Clinton was being deposed he answered one question by saying, well, that depends on what your definition of is, is. And the word through is, is like that. 
It comes from the wor uh, Greek word dia, or we would say dia, dia. It is the root of the word diameter. So in ge geometry, it's how a straight line traverses from one side of the circle to the other. It's also the root word for diagnosis, which combines the word through and to know. So we would say, through knowing, the doctor said I had a sprained ankle. Again, we have this notion of movement, notion of space, time, and causality all wrapped up in this simple word, through. But who is taking the action? Yes, we need to make a decision for Christ and faith, but making a decision does not always involve action. It's like the story of the th three frogs on a log. One of the frogs made a decision to jump in to the pond, so how many frogs were left on the log? A lot of people say two, but there really are still three, three frogs on the log. The one just made a decision. And this gets to the heart of how through is used here. Strong's Greek defines it this way, of one who is the author of the action as well as the instrument. And doesn't that define Christ on Calvary Hill? He wrote the story and then became God's instrument. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the first fruit of the resurrection. He took the action and guides us through the gate. Now reflecting back on our passage, Jesus is not only the gate, he's the gatekeeper and the good shepherd. He is even the spiritual sustenance we find in the pasture, the manna, the bread of life that we will celebrate today in the Lord's Supper. And so, may we all enter through the gate today and every day and receive the mystery of faith. And then we can join with Paul in saying the doxology from Romans 11, 33, 36. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we will hear and join in the communion hymn. This is a kind of an interesting story. I, Debbie found this song called In the Breaking of the Bread. And there's actually, like, we thought there were three different titles for this, so I went on YouTube and found a fourth, <laughs> and when I clicked on the YouTube, I said, that guy looks familiar. And it was my friend, uh, Reverend Carrie Barth from First uh, Methodist in uh, Barbersville, and here he had written this song back in 04, a beautiful song, you'll hear it, and hopefully join in the singing. So, let's... Uh, Listen and join in the song in the breaking of the bread.
time prepare your cup and your bread. <clears throat> Friends, this is not the table of the Presbyterian Church USA. This is not the table of Enslow Park Presbyterian Church. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. All who proclaim Him as Lord are welcome. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord, open our lips and our mouths, and we will proclaim your praise. Your love and mercy never cease, fresh as the morning and sure as the sunrise. God of grace and glory, in the beginning you brought light from darkness, created the world, made us your, in your image, and set us on the way. And so we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. would have been enough, but when we had lost the plot, you gave your word to your chosen people to show us the way, and so we praise you. This would have been enough, but you came among us and stretched out your arms to fulfill that way, and so we praise you, remembering that great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. And Christ would have been enough, but you sent your Holy Spirit to cleanse us, renew us, and to join us to that way, and so we praise you. Lord, we confess we are not worthy, but say, but the word and our souls will be healed. So it was on that Thursday where Jesus and his friends were celebrating the Seder meal, the Passover together, in a room probably about the size of this. Of course, we don't know how many tables they had. They may have had several, certainly not one, and everybody <laughs> facing the same direction as, as in the famous uh, painting. But they were sitting around, and it was the third cup, and at that time, Jesus knew of his arrest. <clears throat> and so on that night, Jesus took bread, and he, he gave thanks to God. And then he broke it, saying to his disciples, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he took the cup, saying, This cup, this very cup is the new covenant, and it's been sealed with my blood, the blood that's been shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. So friends, every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. So at this time we will share together in the holy meal, the manna from heaven. And so take your bread and join me in saying the bread of life. So at this time, take your cup and join me in saying the cup of salvation. So 
So let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for the earth, for the green pastures and still waters, that we may restore them to the goodness and purity that they had at the time you created them. We pray for the people of the world, their na the nations and leaders, that your wisdom and peace may govern all, so that no one will fear. We pray for all those in need, for those in want, those ill, those dying, that we may be the banquet that you set before them as we anoint them and feed them, comfort them in your name. We pray for ourselves and our families, those we love. May no one live in fear. May all dwell in your presence. Blessed are you, great shepherd, who through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit gives us goodness and mercy, leads us down right paths, and restores our souls. Amen. <clears throat> Finally, friends, again, Try to remember um, 1,900 hours. We want to pray 7 o'clock. Pray for the, all those victims of the COVID. Pray for those on the front lines. The good news is this, and also we can give praise because looks like vaccines are in the pipeline. It looks like treatments are in the pipeline. And it looks like the tide is turning on this war. We just need to be a little more patient. And finally, I'm reminded of the words from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 4, verse 14. And these words don't require any further explanation. If my own people will humbly pray and turn back to me, and stop sinning, then I will answer them from heaven. I will forgive them and make their land fertile once again. Go in peace. In the name of God our Creator, in the name of Jesus our Redeemer, in the name of the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen.